Welcome to the third video on titrations, the technicalities of how to perform the titration accurately. Alright, so this is the substance that we're going to pretend is the unknown. It's the hydrochloric acid. We're going to pretend that we, it's even though it's 0 0.5 molar, we're going to pretend we don't know what the concentration of this is. And so we have to pull out aliquots of these of this substance. This is also called the analyte or the titrate. Now what I'm doing here is I'm I'm just rinsed it out with water and I've just rinsed it out with the aliquot with the substance itself as well. So the H it's been rinsed with HCl. This is to make sure it's completely clean, there's no contaminants in there. So I use the bulb to help suck up the liquid and during the whole time I make sure that the pipette and the burettes are always vertical. So I'm trying to make sure that I can get exactly on the line. So I'm, I'm pulling it up to eye height and you just slowly release the bulb to make sure that the level just, just so the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus just touches the line. All right, now to make sure no liquid drops down and I don't get more than what I want, I just get a tissue and wipe the sides of it. And as I release, I make sure that the whole thing's always vertical and I make sure the glass of the conical flask touches at a 45 degree angle and you count to three seconds one two three and that and you'll see there's a little tiny bit of liquid left in there and that's meant to be left in there so it's color the glassware is calibrated to that so there is exactly 25 mils plus or minus the error on the glassware which is 0.03 mils plus or minus 0.03 mils and that's given to you on the glassware and I basically just do that three times to get my conical flasks ready. Be aware too as you're putting the liquid, as, as the pipette's going in and out of the liquid, it pushes down on the meniscus and as you pull it up, uh, gravity kind of the force kind of lets it jump down. So the amount to make sure it's above, the pipette is above the liquid as you're releasing out the solution to get the meniscus on because if the meniscus is if the pipette is inside the liquid, it's going to affect the meniscus. The meniscus isn't going to sit on it. It's going to get pushed up by the liquid. All right, and so as I lift the pipette up and down, I can see the meniscus isn't moving. But if the pipette was in the solution, and I was, but if the pipette was in the solution, I was moving it up and down, the meniscus would move up and down just because of that. So I've added three drops of phenylphthalein to each of these conical flasks. Don't forget to do that. It's quite painful when I see students do that. That's to make sure the solution goes pink once it's been neutralized and starts to become basic. So I've got my standard solution that I've made up and I lower the burette to below eye height before I fill it. And first of all, again, I rinse out the burette with water and with the standard solution that we're going to use. Here I am using a little bit of liquid to make sure the whole thing is, is being rinsed as I pour it out and make sure before you start that you've gotten rid of any of these air bubbles that are just below the, the little valve here and so that's removed as well. You can also get a tissue to wipe down the outside of the burette there and here you can see I'm ready to start and I can take a meniscus reading there and I can write that down as 2.20 and don't forget to read it down to half the smallest increment so that's plus 2.20 not 2.2 it's 2.20 because it goes down in increments of 1, so the uncertainty is half of, of 1, 0.1 mil, so it's 0.05. So it's 2.20 plus minus 0.05. Uh, if you're just reading to the 2s and it's just reads 2.20, 2.30, 2.40, it's pretty clear that you're not, and all your readings look like that, and you don't have 2.35 or whatever it's pretty clear that you're not really looking to, to see whether it's closer to half the smallest increment. And so that's probably the first biggest error. And the, the second biggest error is not getting it to the final drop. Uh, and probably the third is making sure you're not trying to catch every particle by using your water bottle to rinse uh, and wash things down and try and get splashes. So I write that down and I'm ready to do my rough estimate so the first, the rough estimate is just a way to save time to, so that you can get a rough idea of where you are. So you can do it really, really quickly the, the next time, which is the real first trial, and then go down to really close, half a mil or a mil of, of where, you, where you know the answer should be, and then you can go down to the drop by drop. And so you can see here that the liquid is falling out really quickly, and as soon as it goes pink, I'll stop it, and that'll give me a rough idea of what the answer is. And there you can see it's, it's falling down quite quickly going like one mil every three seconds and here you can see it's just it's 
it's coming out quite fast right and now it's even faster it's like a mil per second now at that speed where it's just pouring out what I got there was a reading of 23.9 mils and so now I'm ready to do my first trial I can pretty much go straight away go down to like 22 or 23 and so that's what I've done here and then when I, once I get to 22 I'm going to really start going slowly because I need to see what it is down to the single drop. And what I'm doing here is I'm getting the water bottle and I'm rinsing the sides of the conical flask and the tip of the burette. That's to make sure I get every single particle. So if there's been any splashes on the sides or any attachment of the drop to the tip, I can wash that all together right down into the solution to make sure they're fully mixed. You can see I've got about one drop every three seconds right now. As soon as I think it's getting really, really close, I'm going to have to stop it and do it drop by drop because you must get it to the fin to a single drop. All right, now each time I'm adding a drop, the pink is really staying longer now. And you can see that I'm mixing it quite a lot and the pink just hangs around. So I must, I must do it drop by drop now. I stop at each drop, give it a mix, and there you go. It goes from completely clear to completely pink. So I write that down, that was 49.75, and so the reading is 23.65. Uh, and so I've, you can see here, as I've done it a second time, uh, this time I would have gone down to maybe 23, and then I can just spend really, really slowly, and it went from completely clear to that light pink. And if I add one more drop, you can see that the pinkness goes right over uh, to that, almost to the rough area here. Uh, and so that, that area of where it was just lightly pink that was also, you can see from this pitch here, was 23.65. So I'm taking that as my end point. If I add one more drop, uh, it would have put me over. Uh, and so I'm thinking 23.65 is the answer. Uh, and I did get it twice. So I really should do it three times, but I'm going to stop there because you can get away with two if you know you're spot on. Uh, ideally, it would be best to do it three times. Uh, these are the two tri titrations I did with the ten with the three molar acid. Now because I knew what the concentration was from the first titration, I my rough trial was fairly accurate straight away. I, I really went down to what the answer really should have been. And, and I got four point three zero both times. So I got four point three zero, then eight point six zero. It's kind of cheating. It's not really a rough trial. Uh, and so I, I stopped there again without doing the third one because this is for a video and IB does let you get away with two if, if you're doing it properly you're getting spot on because you're doing the correct techniques okay so now that you know how to do a proper titration and can get a fairly high accuracy and, and get it spot on within each of your trials within the uncertainty 0.05 uh, you're now ready to do the calculations and watch the next video